Oh, you silly livers! No! Wicked gods and evil queens, assassins and enforcers, gods and demons. Confronting every great hero is a great villain. This is a tribute to the most vile and villainous. This is Most Wanted. I get asked sometimes why I love villains so much, which is a question that I feel kind of bounces around villain-loving communities. Why should we love bad guys? Why do we root for the horrid do-badders? How can we stand by and watch people do terrible things on the news each day, only to love characters doing something similar in TV and in video games? I think it's sort of a weird topic with a lot of almost nebulous answers. But if you asked me to pin something off the top of my head, I'd say it has a lot to do with Disney. Because while the Mouse House is famous for creating wonderful music and cute animals and happy endings and all that jazz, I'm willing to wager at least a sizable chunk of his audience is there for the villains. True Love's first kiss at the end is nice and all, but would any big Disney movie be the same without the bad guy stoking the flames? Would The Little Mermaid be The Little Mermaid without Ursula? I mean, I suppose yes, because she makes her a human, but that's neither here nor there. It's the villains who get the big, show-stopping numbers, the over-the-top animations and expressions, the looming scenes devoted to them I could go on and on. The Disney villains are one of the strongest ensembles of evil ever put to screen. They were role models for sickos like me that made evil look fun. Everyone has a favorite Disney villain, some people might say Maleficent or Jafar, you know, somebody cool like them. But not me. <laughs> My head! That Ehud, the pan is banished Tinkerbell. Whoa! Why are you doddering him, Miss Highlight? There he is! Captain Hook is one of the most famous villains ever, birthing in J.M. Barry's Peter Pan, or The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up in 1904. Over his span of existence that has outpaced a century, there have been countless adaptions of the character. You are a liar, dissembler, and prevaricator of the first magnitude. I prefer the real hook. What is it you think you're doing? Well, I think it's called flirting, but if you have to ask, I might be doing it wrong. I said the real hook. <laughs> A lot of the mainline Disney villains are extremely powerful and wield impressive magic, or they're at least menacing in some area. On most Disney villain merchandise is Maleficent, Hades, Ursula, all big powerhouses, and then usually Hook is the butt monkey. It may seem superfluous to discuss, but Captain Hook is undeniably an outlier among the big Disney villain faces, yet he helps sell merchandise in no small part. Why do the execs let him sit at the cool table? If you're anything like me, almost every Disney movie has blended into a giant wave of color and music that you watched all at once at Grandma's house, making it harder to remember some of the smaller moments, especially early in the movie. So accordingly, if you're anything like me, you might have forgotten one of the first things Captain Hook does on screen. In every minute, for all that is in it, the life of a pirate is this time, Pan. That guy. That... It's a little weird to remember that he went from stud to dud so fast, I kind of wondered why that was for a bit after rewatching. But I wonder if the answer is a little more simple than I might think. After all, we see Hook being pretty badass up until the point he sees Peter Pan, his longtime nemesis. He goes from cool as James Dean on a stallion of flames to as cool as someone trying to make a career on YouTube. I mean, after all, the history between Peter and Hook is not hidden. The little fucker cut off Hook's hand and fed it to a crocodile, damning the captain to a paranoia and fear of the animal that wants to end his life. That's some psychological warfare. Now, I'm not exactly fond of the whole rhetoric of, oh, the hero was the villain all along, 
But it is worth noting that in some of the older books, to my knowledge, Peter Pan was significantly more malicious. He symbolizes childhood and all of its warts, including the selfishness that comes along with it. While the Disney Peter Pan was certainly less malevolent, he was still mischievous and a young man with a lot of power. Some accounts claim that Walt Disney was never happy with how cruel his version of the character could seem. While I'm not positive this is true, it holds up a bit of water stacked next to the fact that Walt very intentionally spared Hook's life at the end of the film. With the knowledge that Peter Pan in older contexts could be really scary at his worst, and that Walt even wanted to side with Hook over him at least a little bit, the captain's bottomless fear of Peter Pan speaks volumes. My point being that what could seem like disparity or even intended misleading between Hook before and after he faces Pan may actually be a signifier of his private life. That being that he's actually a pretty fearsome pirate captain worth the hat on his head and able to shoot you between the eyes before he even looks at you, but he crumbles at the sight of the boy that took his hand. Hook is horrified by Pan and even driven to tears by him. Hook sees Pan as the monster that terrorizes him, but I doubt many of us felt the same way. At least not the first time we watched the movie, because Peter is framed as the hero. It is said that everyone is the hero of their own story. It's a very common motto in writing villains because it's true to life, and as a result helps villains feel more relatable, motivated, and interesting. Hook, I feel, takes this to a whole new level. Let's clarify right off the bat that he is a bad guy, and is a cutthroat pirate who kidnaps and kills, but it's clear that next to Peter, he represents nobler qualities. In the play by J.M. Barry, Hook's last words are bad form, criticizing Peter's sneakier tactics. You can see this alluded to in a similar context in Dustin Hoffman's performance in the 1991 film named after the character. We're playing this game according to Master Jack's rules. Bad form. Sit down now, let's resume the game. In a publication of Peter Pan, the narration itself refers to Hook's vibe as not wholly unheroic. Generally speaking, sporting a moral code is a trait in a hero, whereas the opposition that instills fear the way Pan does is actually a trait seen in villains. It's rarely vice versa, the hero chasing and making the villain miserable as their complex, provoking their foe in a way that's almost antagonistic somewhat aptly. The thread that ties us all together is that Captain Hook is the keen essential villain that fancies himself as the hero. He dresses extravagantly and reassures himself with musings of form and sportsmanship, making him a believable villain in his own right, because no truly terrible person in real life knows they're terrible. This is the nook that I feel Hook fills in the lineup of Disney villains. I could go on and on about what role in villainy each one plays. Hook preserves a, a place as a villain who is exceptionally relatable for his flaws. And who can't relate to being tormented by that one kid who just loves to fuck with you? Fitting to Hook being the mature adult to Pan's eternal child, he can be surprisingly pragmatic. The first thing he does when he captures the Lost Boys isn't to just kill them, he tries to bring them to his side. He's pretty reasonable that way, and I bet on some level, he knows that would sting Peter Pan more than just drawing and quartering them. But like most self-important adults, when the facade melts, it really melts. As different as Pan and Hook may seem, if there's one thing they're near equals in, it's the game of scheming. For all of the antics they go through, Hook has fooled Pan into a fair fight more than once. And while he's rarely succeeded, he's proven about as smart as his rival on multiple occasions. I also love how although Hook is slightly older, he's still a denizen of Neverland, and as such, acts like something of a child. He can be a crybaby, he holds an insane grudge, he's possessive and temperamental, he views Wendy as a potential storyteller, and tries to trap and poison the boys with cake. He's almost a kid playing pretend as a pirate, making him more similar to Pan than one may think. A Disney villain is often synonymous with their performer. Whether it's the lovable Pat Carroll breathing life into Ursula, or Eartha Kitt just giving 110% as Yzma. But to be blunt, I never really had that connection with Hook, because his actor was frankly long before my time. But a little research went a long way. Captain Hook was voiced by Hans Conried, a veteran comedic actor most famous outside of Peter Pan, for shows such as I Love Lucy and Make Room for Daddy. Within the same film he played Hook, Conried also voiced the darling sibling's father, continuing the tradition that the two roles be played by the same person that's been practiced since the days J.M. Barry's script was a first on stage. 
Venturing even further, you can find Conrad as the voice of Snidely Whiplash, the central villain of the Dudley Do-Right segments of the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. From a sick friend, all right, Spot, you haven't eaten in three weeks. Now's the time to go off your diet. And it's kind of neat to see that even if most of us weren't around to see it or know it, Conrad was sort of a career villain voiced, just as a lot of Disney villains are voiced by today. Conrad seemed to have a monopoly on mustache twirling, railroad tying archetypes. Unfortunately, Conrad passed away in 1982, and from that point on, the torch of Captain Hook for works such as Kingdom Hearts and Return to Neverland was passed to veteran voice actor Corey Burton. And no matter how I feel about the work he's in or who's playing him, I always find Hook to be a ton of fun. And Captain Hook is a man of his word. I promised I wouldn't harm a single hair on his head. And now, this is the one I won't harm! So, his surprisingly nuanced characterization and iconic voice put together, it's easy to see how Hook fit the rest of the Disney villains fairly easily. And more than that, he's an incredibly fun villain who steals the show every time he appears. His sword fight with Pan is one of my favorite climaxes in a Disney movie, and his chemistry with Smee is just hilarious. He's nothing short of a pop culture icon. Enough so that I doubt his popularity has ever been questioned by anyone less geeky than I am. He's just synonymous with a brand, and I bet if you surveyed anyone not living beneath a rock, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who didn't recognize him.